This is the Freedom is a Free podcast with Laura Figures. I am your host. Ladies and gentlemen, today I wanted to focus the conversation and really have a heart to heart. Um, the last couple of weeks have really troubled me, um, like others. Um, seeing exactly what happened in the DC metropolitan area, it was it was very disheartening. January 6th, I think no one really anticipated that people will come to riot and protest the confirmation of our president, Joe Biden. And I'm not saying that people don't have the right to, but it was out of the ordinary. Typically, that is a celebration. Typically, in the past, they've all came to an agreement of, yes, we have confirmed the votes and, you know, this is our next president. But unfortunately, in 2021, we thought all of the chaos was left in 2020, but no, it hit us January 6th. And I'm not saying that they didn't have the right to protest, but what I am saying, the acts that happened at the Capitol was distasteful, was disgusting. Um, I cannot believe where, where we're at right now um, in our society that we were challenged the democracy of our government. It's not like we're a third world country, you know, we're, we're not, there's no dictatorship going on right now. Um, so I was surprised. I was surprised to see people come out from all nationalities to come out and protest, but the protests went to riots and the riots went to straight extremist views. And those extremists are the ones that were inside the Capitol, right? There are different levels. And I know some people were probably taken back. Some, some Trump supporters were taken back because, you know, Yes, they were probably upset that, you know, Biden won because their candidate, you know, lost the election. That's understandable. Okay, it's understandable that you want to protest. Everybody has a right. But going to the extreme of breaking into the Capitol, which I know there are some some missed stories about how the, the writers got into there. You know, I did see some pictures and videos of police officers, Capitol police officers, opening up the barricades, letting them in, welcoming them in, taking pictures with them. And guess what? It got out of hand very quickly. And so I can't say it's all of the rioters and Trump supporters that, that did this. But what I am saying is that we need to move forward. We need to figure out how to bring more positivity to our to, to America, where we live, the, the land of the free. So when we look back to January 6th, That was a hard pill to swallow, especially for the people that lived in the D.C. area. Our entire world was disrupted that afternoon when we're seeing everybody go on lockdown, when they're telling folks in the local areas, in the metropolitan area, stay at home, do not come to D.C. When our police departments are being called down to D.C. to come support the D.C. police officers, the Capitol police officers, because it was it was crazy, literally. So to take it a step further, now the National Guard is being requested and now the National Guard is sitting at the Capitol, sleeping at the Capitol, protecting our Capitol. But from who? Who would be trying to do this? Not an American. And I was shocked at the fact that Americans are doing this. People in my own backyard, people that I probably talk to every day to have these extremist reviews on our country, our democracy. I'm not saying, like I said before, I'm not saying that can't that you can't have your own opinion, but to go to that length is what kind of devastated me. And I live in the DC metropolitan area. Very devastating, very scary, okay? They have locked up DC, boarded up most of DC, can't go down streets. Till this day. So after the rioting, people got locked up, arrested, charged. We have individuals stealing laptops. We have individuals taking folders, files, paperwork, breaking windows, um, stealing things out of the Capitol. Of course, you know, they got found, they got locked up. But what was that for? What was all of that for? Where did it get you? It got you some federal time from some federal charges that you're about to face. That, those are, that's extreme, very extreme. 
So it was really, really hard, disheartening to, to know that there were military service members and veterans that were there. And we're supposed to fight together against the enemy that are not Americans. So help me understand how, how am I supposed to put this together, wrap this around in my head of a military service member or veteran that fights for our country against our enemies, but then comes to the Capitol to tear it down. So very, very disheartened, um, very disappointed. But then we have a National Guard. They come in, they're doing their job. They're protecting and serving our Capitol building. So then let's fast forward to the inauguration. Oh, breathtaking, honestly. Happy, excited, looking forward to the rest of 2021, the next four years. I'm excited to see what Joe Biden has to offer, what Kamala Harris has to offer, their, their picks, their appointees. Um, it's a breath of fresh air. And it's something that I think that our nation needed. I'm not saying that everything that Trump did was bad, wrong, and different. But what I am saying, we had a hard four years, and 2020 was definitely the most difficult. So Biden coming in and getting um, elected and, what, first of all, on the campaign trail, he spoke of all of these things that he was going to do, okay? And right now we're a country that everything that he said that he was going to do, we need him to actually get it done and do it. And so it was very exciting for me to, to know that he came straight into office the first day, January 20th and signed some executive orders. He got to work regarding the pandemic. He signed the executive order to appoint Jeff Zent um, as the COVID response coordinator. Additionally, in that order, it restored the directorate for the global health, security, and biodefense. Um, we have reinstated our ties with the WHO organization and Dr. Fauzi, will be the head of the U.S. delegation, okay? And, and I know if you have not seen this in the news or read um, a news article, please dive in. Please look what he has done on his first day in office. Um, additionally, he has changed some executive orders in regards to the immigration and visa status. President Biden bolstered the DACA program that protects from deportation immigrants brought to the U.S. as children. We call them the dreamers. Also, the executive order calls on Congress to provide, sorry, legislation for permanent status and a path to citizenship for those immigrants. Now, does anybody remember the Muslim ban? Because I know I surely do. Um, it blocked travel to the United States for several predominantly Muslim and African countries. President Biden got rid of it. He ended it. Also, we can say goodbye to the construction of the border wall with Mexico. So let's move on to climate change. President Biden signed a letter to re-enter the U.S. in the Paris Climate Agreement. In addition, there were several other policies that he reversed, one of them being the Keystone XL pipeline, the vehicle emission standards, and the oil and natural gas leases. Also, to the racial and LGBT equality, uh, President Biden revoked the executive order limiting the ability of the federal agencies, contractors, and other institutions to help the diversity and inclusive training. I was affected by that. I could not do my diversity and um, inclusion training because of this. Biden got rid of it. He also designated Susan Rice, who is the head of his domestic policy council, as the leader of a robust interagency effort requiring all federal agencies to make rooting out systemic racism central to the work. The order also moves to ensure that Americans of all backgrounds have equal access to federal government resources, benefits, and services. Um, in addition to that, another executive order reinforced the Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, 
to require that all federal government does not discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. That's a policy that reverses Trump's action during his administration. In addition, if we move into the economy, President Biden is moving to extend a federal moratorium on evictions and ask agencies, including architect um, agriculture, veterans affairs and housing, urban development departments to prolong a moratorium on foreclosures on federally granted, um, federally guaranteed mortgages that will enact in response to the COVID pandemic. That um, those extensions though, they run through at least the end of March. In addition, and everybody knows about this one, all the students know about this one. The president is moving to continue a pause on that federal student loan interest and principal payments to the end of September. But I still keep hope alive. Hopefully we can get a cancellation up to $50,000 in our student debt per person. I'm still waiting, Biden. So basically holding our government accountable. Basically, President Joe Biden has now established ethic rules for those who serve in his administration to aim to restore and maintain, uh, maintain trust in the government. He knows that right now, a lot of the American citizens, we don't trust our government, federal, state, or local. So at the federal level, he has ordered all of his appointees in the executive branch to sign an executive pledge. Now tell me how great of a first day our president, Joe Biden, has started. I'm just so excited again, like I said. I'm just so excited that he has came on the first day and made some real huge, powerful changes amongst several different areas. The pandemic, racial and LGBT equality, immigration, just to name a few of the executive orders where he has made changes. I didn't give you all 17. I just highlighted a few. So with all of that to say, I am excited for the next four years. I'm excited for where we are going. And I want to look forward towards 2021 being very prosperous for everyone, being everyone being blessed and healthy. Let's fight this coronavirus. And I look forward to you guys holding your federal, state, and local officials accountable for what we have gone through. The fight is not over. We just got through one battle. So with that being said, everyone, thank you for listening to my heart to heart. But I feel like I just needed to get off my chest. It's been weighing on me for the last couple of weeks. And I felt like I just needed to, to have a conversation. So thank you, everyone, for joining and tuning in. Again, I am your host, Laura Figures. And don't forget, thank a veteran. Thank you for your service. Freedom isn't free.